So before when we left off, we had a uh, some text that could float up and we could fade it out and destroy it from our game world. So now we would like to be able to create critical strikes. And to be able to do that, we would like need to add the text to our canvas here. And when you have the text there, make sure the scale is set to one. And then you can select your text, mouse over in your scene view and press the F button to get to it. So now we need to create the animation and we can create the animation by going to window and find animation. And then you can click create animation button and simply just put it inside assets and animation folder. If you have an animation folder, else just put it in the asset folder and we can call this one uh, critical critical animation. So the way this works is that you need to record, press the record button here, and then you need to move this timeline here and change how you want it. So basically after 0 0.5 seconds here, we would like the text to be larger. So we can say that it should be 2, 2, 2 instead. So now it's, we scale it up to 2 as you can see, scaling it up to 2. And then after 0 0.10, we would like it to be scaled back to 1, 1, 1 again. So now we have an animation that goes up and goes down again. So maybe we want it to last longer before we actually scale it down. So we can take these and drag them out to 0 0.15 for example. So it gets large and then it gets bigger slowly. As it gets last and then gets smaller slowly, that's what I'm wanting to say. Okay, we can stop the recording and we can always come back to this by uh, finding the, the animation clip inside animations here and selecting it, then we can always edit it again. So if you find the animation clip here, you can select it and then you need to remove the loop time because we don't need to loop, we only need to play it once. We don't want to loop it. Um, then we need to select the text here and as you can see it has an animator controller on it and it already has the text here so that's fine besides that we need to add the animation clip so we can get the length of the clip um, right now it should simply just play by itself um, let's try to take the prefab here and add it and remove this and play the game Yeah, as you can see right now, it just pops up every time. So we get a critical strike no matter what now. And we're not interested in that. We want to be able to tell it if we need a critical strike or not. So right now we need to add some code. So jump into your code. And in here we need to add a, um, what's it called? A new variable here, public animation clip critical create animation like this and then we need to make a bool private bool called crit and inside our initialize we can say if critical if crit if this one is true well then we know that we need to make a uh, critical animation and else we need to start the code scene for fading out so if we crit we need to do something else um, to animate it and else we simply just need to fade our text out slowly um, so we need to create a new coroutine as well that's called critical so let's say private i enumerator critical and we need to yield return new. So here it becomes interesting. We need to wait with the fading out until we are done showing the critical animation. So we need to wait for some time. So we need to say yield return new, wait for seconds. And then we need to say crit animation dot length. So you're waiting until the critical animation length is done. When it's done, then we can start coroutine fade out
Um, I'm actually not sure. Yeah, this grid. We can say that this dot grid equals. Um, then we need to tell if it's a grid, so we need to add to the initialize a bool called grid. So this could grid equals grid. So if it's a critical, then we need to start coroutine critical. Um, and we need to play the crit animation. So we can basically say git component animator dot in enable we can't name it, so let's just set trigger critical. And we're going to create this trigger in a few seconds. So if we decide that this is a critical strike, then we are going to set the trigger to critical. We're going to start the coroutine critical. And the, this one is simply just going to fade it out. And when we're done with this, we're going to say critical crit equals false. Because we're done showing the crit, then we're going to make it false. And the reason that I do that is because I want to make sure that the text doesn't move when it shows a critical. So it, if it's a crit, it stops, plays the animation, gets large and gets small, and then moves after. So we can say if crit, if this is false. So if we go to the player and we tell this that this is a true, this is a critical, no, not here. Uh, we need to say bool crit. And down here, when we're calling initialize, we need to give the crit information with it because we just asked for a crit information here in the initialize a boolean that's true or false. So if it's true, then it's a crit. If it's false, then it's not a crit. So, and then it knows how to behave based on that. So we need to say combat text manager crit. And then now player, we need to tell if it's a crit or not. So if I say key code dot space dot v, so I make a crit on v right now, and this is going to be true. And up here, when I'm pressing space, it's going to be false. So if I press V, I'm going to make a critical. And if I press space, I'm going to make a normal hit saying hello and a critical one saying hello. Then we need to jump back into Unity and in here we need to go to our animations and select the text animator. When you have selected that, you need to go up to your window and then you need to find the animator window. And here it's very important that you find the animator window, not the animation, but animator. So click on the animator and when you open that up, you'll see that you have this uh, view here with critical animation. And this view here is this um, selected um, animated animation controller and you can see what it contains. So if we click on our text, let's find the prefab for a second. And we see here we have this animator on it. And then this animator, it has a controller which is called text. And this is the text we have open right now. And this controller will control the animation. So right now it just plays the critical animation clip right away, which means that no matter what kind of animation we'll be uh, playing, what kind of, uh, no matter what button we are clicking, it will always um, be playing the critical animation for us. As you can see here, I press space here and it makes a little bit critical and I press the V button and it also makes a little bit critical. So it's not possible for me to make non-critical strikes right now because it simply goes up and plays this animation right away. So we need to do something so that we will only use the critical animation when we need it. And that's when, when the player or the enemy asks for a critical strike. So right click inside your uh, window here, the gray area, click create state and create an empty state. And this state, you can simply just select it, go up here and call it non crit or something. Non crit. And this state needs to be the uh, standard state. So if you right click on it and say it, set it to set as layer default state, then it becomes orange because it's the default layer now. 
and now it's our default state so if we play our game now we will not be able to make critical strikes anymore now everything is non-critical again as you can see okay so to go from this non-crit state here we'll need to go to the critical um, animation so right click on the non-crit click make transition and then click on the critical animation so now we have a transition where we can go from our non-crit to our critical animation and we only want to go to that critical animation when we are using the V button right now uh, if I could find my place sorry um, it's in the player of course I'm getting confused apparently okay so when we're using this V button and what we did was that we made sure that whenever we press the V button, we are asking the combat text manager to create a text. And inside the combat text manager, we have create text here, and this one instantiates the text. And inside the combat text, we will instantiate the text and make it move. But as you can see here, inside the initialize function, which we are calling from the combat text manager here, well, inside the combat text initialize function, we have this if I just explained, and here we have get component animator dot set trigger critical. So we are trying to set a trigger called critical inside our animator, which means we need to make that trigger so that whenever that one is triggered, well, then we are going to transition. So we're trying to trigger it here, but it doesn't exist yet. So this transition need to have that critical trigger associated with it. So if we go to parameters up here, and now I already have it, but I, I shouldn't have it. So if we go to parameters here, you need to click on the little plus button here, and then you need to select the trigger. And this trigger needs a name, and right now the trigger we are trying to trigger is called critical. So we simply need to take this text and write the same up here. So your new trigger should be named critical. Okay, so now we have a trigger which we are triggering every time we try to create a critical strike. And this trigger needs to be associated with this transition here. So you can go to conditions over here if you select the transition by clicking on it. Then you can go out here to the conditions and this written list is empty. If you click on this little plus here, you'll see that critical automatically gets selected because it's the only um, condition we have right now because we don't have more. If we would make more here, um, they will also show up over here. So right now, there's nothing else uh, left to do with this one. So if you open the settings, you'll see that it has an exit time, it has a fixed duration, and it has a transition duration. Basically, we don't need an exit time. Um, we can simply just set this to zero. Transition duration is how long it's going to take for the non-crit to transition to critical animation. And we want this to happen right away without any, any delay. So basically, just set this one to zero and that's it now we have a, a function now we have functionality for doing non-crits and critical strikes because and and remember we are asking for the critical strike right here when we are saying true then we want it to be a critical strike and if it's false we want it to be a non-crit and i'll show you in the next video how we can actually make use of, the, of this in a more um, usable way or what should i say so let's try to run so this I'm doing right now should be non-crits and it is so hello with non-crit and now I want to make critical strikes and they're playing a little too late as you can see here they're triggering up there so we need to change something so that they're triggering at the correct point so let's figure out what's wrong here okay so basically what's wrong is because we had some have to make some changes in the transition because we would like our stuff to trigger right away if we uh, run around here and press the V button we want it to trigger right away instead of just up there so we need to click the transition again and there is something called has exit time remove that one we don't need that one to be exacted and try to remove this fixed duration as well so this is how the transition should look like between the non-crit and the critical animation um, sorry about that little mistake um, if you can't open it, just find the text. Um, if you can't find it again, if you lost your place, just find the text um, 
uh, what is it called, the Trix Animator Controller, go to the window and select the um, animator here, and then you'll get in here, select the arrow, remove the has exit time, and remove fixed duration, and leave everything else at zero. So if we go again now, and press our V button, you'll see that they crit right away. They get large and small right away when we create a critical strike. Non crits and criticals. Yes, there we go. So that was how we can create non crit and critical strikes. In the next video, we will have a look at how we can uh, use these scrolling combat text whenever we are colliding with another object, for example, a bullet or something. I'm just going to do it with the heart and the bonfire, but you can use anything a bullet, a sword. Um, um, take fall damage or something like that. So, um, thanks for watching and see you in the next part.